Welcome back, everyone. Meteorologists don't just tell us the five-day forecast. They keep us out of harm's way by tracking catastrophic storms and severe weather events. And because of years of federally funded climate research, the accuracy of their predictions have vastly improved. But now layoffs and proposed budget cuts are jeopardizing the progress we've made. Our chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, explains just what's at stake. You're being rushed into surgery with a life-threatening tumor. Your doctor is one of the best, not just because of her years of tireless training, but because of the decades of medical research uncovering just how your cancer works and the best way to treat it. Now, imagine a hurricane is what's threatening your life. And in place of a doctor, there's a meteorologist using years of climate research to track the storm, giving you a chance to get out of harm's way a chance to survive. Now, what if that research suddenly went away? Can we have a strong National Weather Service without an investment in climate science? No. Climate science and weather are inextricably linked. Today, we have forecasts that go out 10 days with accuracy because we're making measurements in places like the Indian Ocean, in Antarctica, in the Arctic. We are canvassing the globe and looking how that information gives us the intelligence we need in order to make a forecast that's not just daily, that's not weekly, it's beyond, it's monthly, it's seasonally for the farmers so they know what to plant. Craig McLean spent more than four decades at the agency responsible for much of the nation's weather and climate research, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. I retired in 2022 on April Fool's Day because I thought that was an appropriate day to go out. <laughs> but Craig says since Donald Trump began his second term, there is nothing funny about what happened at NOAA. More than 1,000 employees were laid off or took buyouts, part of the Trump administration's plan to slash the federal workforce and eliminate wasteful spending which cost the agency thousands of years of combined experience. People whose expertise cannot be replicated because the doge cuts were so steep and so unguided. And now NOAA finds itself facing significant budget cuts proposed by the Trump administration. If NOAA loses the budget money, there is no academic community to be doing that work because it's NOAA money that was paying the academic community to be a 50-50 partner with the NOAA government scientists in order to do this work. So this is a map of a bunch of different cooperative institutes that you know, different universities have with NOAA. One of those partnerships is with the University of Miami, where hurricane researcher Andy Hazelton works on state-of-the-art computer weather models that are making hurricane forecasts more accurate than ever. Five-day forecast last year was about as accurate as a one-day forecast was in 1992 when Hurricane Andrew hit here in South Florida. You look at 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit, that was just a couple years into doing five-day forecasts, and forecasts now are basically twice as accurate as they were then. Did you catch that? If Katrina happened today, the forecast would be at least two times more accurate. We get out here today. You guys are getting out of here right now of when Katrina hit. This was the forecast cone back then, showing it up into the Florida Big Bend and sort of missing the southwest turn over Miami. But with modern modeling, you would have had a much better idea that this was going to hit southeast Louisiana and Mississippi several days out and would have had better warnings. So hopefully we'd be better prepared for the next Katrina. I've never seen something like a, an entire home, a well-built home, rolling down the street. We just watched that happen in real time. Andy says because of work like his, $5 billion is saved every time a hurricane hits the country. And more importantly, countless lives are saved too. Wanting to see forecasts continue to get better and better so that people are able to prepare sooner and sooner and protect themselves when hurricanes come. But like everything, it comes at a cost. To do that, Andy needs funding and the support of federal science agencies who use tools that are not available to private companies like NOAA's Hurricane Hunters program, which has been working with the University of Miami for decades. There's a hurricane. Yeah, there it is. I had the opportunity to fly with the hurricane hunters who collect critical information that powers those weather models and tell us when and where those life-threatening storms will hit. It's kind of like an MRI where you're going and really getting like a three-dimensional picture inside the storm and a full scan, basically. That info is critical for all meteorologists. I'm talking every single private company. The data that comes to your apps. We all rely on these 3D scans. 
On top of that, a ton of federal weather data. It all helps us predict where a storm is headed and how strong it will be. Michael, Andrew, Camille, mm -hmm. they were tropical storms just 48 hours prior. So that's, you know, th that's kind of the case that you know, why we really want to make our modeling better so that when we get these rapidly intensifying cases that just take off, we're ready for them, especially when they're heading towards populated areas. And thanks to scientific research and better data collection, those well-known hurricane cones have been shrinking. The smaller the cone, the more accurate the predicted path. Investing in climate research isn't only about preparing for the next storm. It's creating a foundation for the years and decades to come. How do we make it better? How do we keep improving? I think scientists need to uh, make a bigger commitment to communicate to that person on the street, their, their aunt, their uncle, their next door neighbor, how important the science is we do. If you narrow the path by one mile, you're saving $4 million. Ben Kurtman says a big part of the success we've seen with better forecasting is the result of that collaboration between the federal government All right, so this is the beachhead. and universities, like the use of this hurricane simulator to better understand a storm's destructive behavior. That's the beachhead, and so you can test building materials, coral reefs, whatever kind of infrastructure. You're going to have this sense that you are in a Category 5 hurricane, even though you're safe. We have to basically be bringing in the latest universities and external collaborators to make sure that we're still still have all this knowledge and are you know keeping up with with technology. Whether it's medical research or meteorology, science saves lives. And without investing in it, Craig says the forecast for all of us will be darker. We are the patient. Earth is the patient and the doctors are the scientists that are studying it. You want a healthier patient invest in your doctors, invest in the research that is necessary in order to understand how we could be building these better forecasts. NOAA tells us that they have requested $4.5 billion in funding and that, quote, this robust funding level empowers NOAA to deliver the world's best science and services, end quote. The agency said that they are eliminating wasteful spending and what they are calling inefficient green policies to ensure that every dollar serves the American people effectively. Lindsay? Still more questions on the horizon. Our thanks to Ginger for that.